Hey, what's up, YouTube? I'm on my way home, driving on this freeway. It's raining, Southern California. You believe it's raining? Anyway, I'm gonna get right to the point. I've been reading this book entitled Relentless by um, uh, I, Tim S. Grover, I believe his name is, and it's just been phenomenal. And so, right now I got a special treat. It's never been done before. I've never seen this done on YouTube. And it's because of this book that I'm doing this type of uh, 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 interview. I have my brother on the phone. He lives in Denver, Colorado, and he's the one that turned me on to the book. And so, on the phone, here we are. Hey, what's up, Nick? What's going on? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. This, this comes as a direct result of you, like, literally changing my life. Now, you guys don't understand. I'm the oldest. I'm supposed to be changing his life. <laughs> I'm supposed to be doing things that makes his life better. But he's been like just throwing these these perfect pitches and the third pitch has just been phenomenal. It's really changed my whole thinking and it's because you t told me about this book, Relentless. Well, I think I think to clarify, I think we've always had a relationship where we're close enough in age, we're almost exactly a year, maybe less. No, a year and three, three months, three days, a year and three days. So anyway, we've always been more like, um, you know, on an even keel, so we can bounce ideas off each other and challenge, we've always challenged each other. So. I don't feel like I'm doing it. I mean, yes, and I recommended this book to you, but I feel like in other ways, you challenge me just as much. Oh, wow, I appreciate that. But um, yeah, so so this book, Relentless, uh, what, what made you want to pick this book up and read it first before I did? That's very interesting because when I, in a previous job, not my current one, I uh, I was given a book called Good to Great that I never read. And so I've been on this journey to expose myself to um, more success, a more successful mindset. And so as a result, I've been listening to lots more audiobooks related to achieving success and um, setting goals and that sort of thing. And so when I saw this book, just by title, it's called Good to Great to Unstoppable. And so I was like, oh, this must be the second part of that other book that I never even read. And so I said, well, then I'll just get the newest version. And so I got this, but they're not, it's not the same author, not the same book. <laughs> and so I happened upon it by mistake, but from the very first few minutes, I was like, oh my gosh, this book is speaking directly to me. And I believe that Thomas and even his son could benefit from this. And so that's why I think it was only like maybe a chapter into it when I sent you the link to the book. Um, and it took me, and I'm gonna be honest, it took me a, a day or so because uh, with with work and just family life, you, you, you say, okay, I'll, I'll get to it. I'll, I'll, okay, I'm this. I'm tired. So, you know, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just sit down for a moment, and then I'll watch a, you know, a couple of YouTubes, drinks, you know, like a cold uh, 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 beverage or you know, a cup of afternoon coffee, and I'll get to it. But there was something that just said, you know what? The first book he gave me was awesome. The second book he gave me was awesome. All right, I'm just going to find time and read this book, or better, I listen to it because I do a lot of driving and I have a literally about two, two and a half hours, three hours a day where I'm just driving. So I'm like, okay, let me start listening to this book. So I purchased it in my car, on my phone, and the first chapter, or the first part of it was a note from Tim, the author of the book, 
and from that note, oh, I'm getting goosebumps just experiencing that first moment all over again. And this is my third time into the book. And I was like, I gotta call Nick and tell him, wow. And that was just from the note. Yeah, I, I do remember you called and you were super excited. And then I was excited that you were excited and we were both excited together. Yeah, it's, uh, um, and it's, it's literally, it's, it's awakening what was already inside. Cause I, I knew there was something different about me. Even when I was a kid, I knew there was something different about me. I was always uh, the first kid picked on the playground for, for like playground sports. I was always the guy who was thrust into leadership roles, no matter if it was Boy Scouts or my first job working at Wendy's. Uh, I became a manager at Wendy's and I'm like, okay, what is going on? I was always thrust in, into this position. I was always the guy that people would look to if something is going down, they'd be like, oh, Thomas, what are we gonna do? And I'm like, I don't know. Why are you looking at me? But then after reading this book and things in my life, I start, to, man, I, it's always been there. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I mean, even for myself, I don't think I, I mean, I had a similar path where like in my first job, I was promoted into management and leadership positions right away but I think even still then I was thinking well there's always people that are better there are always you know and I think I just kind of resigned at some point there was a great a long period of time where I was just like oh I'll just be average like everyone else but it always felt uncomfortable it always felt like in the back of my head or the, my brain was telling me, this is too easy for you. You should do more. You should, I don't understand why you're being this way when it's not your nature. And so, um, you know, later in my adult life, I took up sports. I wasn't really into sports when I was in school, um, but later I did. And then uh, I would work extra hard in my own time, just trying to push myself. Like I always had that inner drive to push myself to do more, to be better, to be the best, even though people would say, oh, you're too old for that. I just, I, internally I never subscribed to those types of, I guess, standard limitations that people put on themselves with age or whatever. I can remember being 28 and trying to compete um, in track and field meets and, and having people say, oh, at 28, you're too old. And I was like, what does that even mean? And now that it's 20 years past that, I, I really am like, those people are, are crazy. People just say these things because they don't want to feel bad for not doing work themselves. So they want to put limitations on you. Yeah, yeah, I 100% agree, which causes you um, and especially if you start to become middle age or you're you're into adulthood. I remember being into adulthood uh, from 25 to about 35, thinking that the door was closing, the windows closing, the the, the like uh, passage is getting smaller. Uh, you're getting too old to do this. You're getting too old to do that. Why are you thinking like this? And then to hear people tell you that, but there's this fire inside you. And you simply say, you know what? Okay, fire, it's time for you. I'm gonna turn down the fire. Just like you would turn down the fire on a stove. And then it's like, okay, I'm listening to everyone around me. Um, and then of course life happens and it just compounds on, on top of that. And you really feel like, okay, is this it? But that fire is still in there smoldering. And when you shared this book with me, it just, awaken that fire as if you know uh, I can liken it to a coach saying okay get your ass up off the bench you can do this stop feeling sorry for yourself no and it's, and it's exactly true and it's uncomfortable to be it's uncomfortable to be around people who also 
don't have that inner drive. Um, and I know in the book he says he doesn't like <laughs> the straight inner drive. I was getting ready to say, what are you doing? <laughs> I know. He doesn't like the inner drive, but, you know, speaking in terms of what people understand, he doesn't like the, the phrase inner drive because it doesn't, it's not a call to action. It's not the act of doing. It's like, oh, I have it in me, but what are you actually doing? So anyway, I digress. Um, it's hard to watch people that don't take action um, that are around you. For, for instance, um, I started playing rugby, I actually started a rugby team here in Denver, and me and the other two co-founders, we always were pushing ourselves and, and, and striving to be better and better, and we're all older individuals, and so to see someone in their early to mid-20s, even late 20s for that matter, come to practice and they're just half-assing it, it's, it hurts, it hurts you inside to see that, because oh. you're like, why, I don't understand why you're being that way. I, you know, and that's, and that, that's the, that's it, and it, that's it in the whole nutshell, and, and it, it becomes frustrating because you, you want to say, and you do, you tell them sometimes, you have the biggest, biggest component in your favor, and that is youth. And you're wasting yeah. it, you know. You're totally. you're squandering it. Uh, you literally. I used to, and of course, when I was younger, because I didn't understand. When people say you have the world at your fingertips, you can have anything you want, and then you're like, "What does that even mean?" No, I can't, because I can't reach out and get a million dollars. Well, what they should have said was, if you're willing to put in the work. Exactly. If you need to put in the work, and you can be a quote cleaner and for those who haven't read the book you'll understand what I'm talking about you will be a cleaner now, you don't have to be a cleaner in everything but you find that thing that you want and you become the best in the world at what you do but you can do it you just got to put in the work and we always no. get back to work yeah and that's that's true it's hard to it's hard to make someone have a good work ethic when it's not there you can't they have to have it within them or have enough reasons to to want the work to put in the work um and that's just not everyone and it's hard to be it's hard it, you just have days where you're like i just don't understand people i just don't understand it but you know like you said there are three kinds of people in this world and cleaners at the top of the list and Unfortunately, everyone's not a cleaner, and so, but a, cle a cleaner knows who to put in the right position at the right time. Absolutely, especially when, and, and I've noticed it, um, I don't know what the climate is in uh, Denver, but I know what the climate is as far as the type of people you get in Southern California. and. This may offend some people, and honestly, I don't care because sometimes you need to be offended. Uh, there's a lot of um, snowflakes, uh, cream puffs, people that have, and I uh, used to, I call it first world problems to where if they get a little bit of resistance, they want to throw their hands up and quit, or it's too hard, or how can you make easy easier? Um, I experience it every day when I'm at work to the point that I, I do tell people sometimes, that's a first world problem can you when it becomes a real problem talk to me then and then we'll still find a solution but you're just not trying no it is true and people want something for not necessarily nothing but for very little so like in business i run a, uh, a team of employees or i manage a team of employees here at work where i am now and it's amazing what people, like we're going through self-reviews right now and people have to rate themselves and then I have to rate them and then we have to have a conversation if there's a discrepancy in how they rated themselves and how I rate them. And people that come in to just do their work are giving themselves outstanding and it's like, no, you're just doing your job. Like that is your job. You don't get a blue ribbon or an outstanding rating 
just for doing what we asked you to do from the get-go. Amen. Amen. It's like, you know, he mentioned something in the book, and I and I tell my son this all the time because everyone says, oh, Ch you know, Chase is so awesome. He's so good. He's, he's a good player. Aren't you proud of him? I'm like, this may sound mean, but he's supposed to be a good player. That's his job. He's not supposed to sit the bench. He's not supposed to be subpar. He is supposed to be a good player. Now, I want him to be a great, and now that I've been reading this book, become a cleaner. So, no. If By Chase being a good player, does that impress me? No. There's a lot of good players. That doesn't impress right. me. That's what he's supposed to be. Right, exactly. Like when you join the sports team, you don't join the sports team helping you sit the bench. I mean, yeah, people end up sitting the bench, but that's that shouldn't be their their goal from the get go. You should want to be a good player, and so when you're a good player, that is what you are supposed to be. Exactly, and 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 it's hard for people, especially again in Southern California where you know you deal with a lot of leagues and a lot of organizations to where um, everybody gets a ribbon, everybody gets a trophy, and I'm not kidding. Uh, people say that, and but it's very true, especially the part of the country where I live. Uh, you just, you put your name on, well, you sign your kid up for a league, and at the end of the season, everybody gets a participation award. Um, I knew the, partition, the like participation award for me at a young age was not going to fly for me. I don't want a participation participation award. Um, I'm better than you. <laughs> and I want something that says I'm better than you. I want a trophy. I want a medal. I want a title as being the best at what I do. And right. and for a long time when I was living in Oklahoma, there was no one better than me. I don't <laughs> there was no one better. Is that being conceited or cocky? No, it's confident, it's true. No one was better than me. I don't want a participation award. And I tell my son that too. Yeah, you, you have to. I mean, even with adult rugby, at the end of the season, we did give people certificates that so that they completed a season, et cetera, et cetera. But we also had awards that would call out people who were outstanding if you were a forward of the year or back of the year or you know um, player of the year we had those um, but I you know I guess after after listening to this book I think the one thing that maybe I shouldn't have done was give people a participation yay you participated this season <laughs> No, and that's and that is so true. Okay, guys, uh, just to give you, for those who maybe just joining in, uh, you know, because some people they go forward on the YouTube video, whatever. But uh, my brother and I are talking about uh, the book by Tim S. Grover. It's entitled "Relentless: From Good to I have to even get what the sub is because I always want to go to uh, Relentless: Becoming Unstoppable." But uh, I'll put the link down in the description bar. And uh, if you haven't read this book, either via audiobook or a physical book, this is a book that it needs to go in your library. Uh, and, I, and I deal with a lot of Christian people, and yes, he says the F word. Yes, he says the A word. Yes, he says the S, S word. But if that's going to offend you, then this book isn't for you because you know whether you like it or not you live on planet earth and you have to deal with earthly situations so you need to uh, nut up and understand that sometimes people drop the s-bomb or the f-bomb don't get offended because if you get offended it may stop you from growing so uh, and again I'm starting to be me because of this book uh, before I would explain that into a light little puffy you know, oh, okay, all right, here, here, it's cuddly. No, this is not cuddly. Life is not cuddly, people. Sometimes you have to man up or woman up and just take charge. Yeah, and some of the quotes that I really like from this book, um, there's one, and, and I'm not gonna quote them like 
and then give you just a general synopsis of what the quote means. But one is, don't settle for for being at everyone else's level. You need to bring everyone else up to your level. Um, and then there's one that says, you're not intimidated, uh, cleaner is not intimidated by pressure, you thrive on it. So like when everyone else is running from those high pressure situations, they are looking to someone who's willing to run the other direction toward it and make decisions. Right. Um, and then you don't compete with anyone, you find your opponent's weakness and you attack. I'm, I'm sorry guys, yeah, that's how you have to do, whether you're playing sports or you're in business or just in life. Um, I do like what he said, because this is my third time through the book, and he says, you know, uh, you don't have to be a cleaner in everything, uh, because you can't, you can't do everything. However, if you're going to be a cleaner parent, then your business life suffers. If you're going to be a cleaner business person, then your then your uh, personal life may suffer. Whatever you understand, this if you want to become the best at what you do, something is going to suffer. There's a price. Everything costs. Right. Exactly true. Um, and another quote I loved was. You don't recognize failure, you know there's more than one way to get what you want. And I think that's what a lot of people are missing in this day and age is they think, oh, if something didn't go my way, I failed at it and they want to quit. But that's just an opportunity for you to learn and, and uh, reevaluate your approach and start again. This time I'm not going to go left, I'm going to go right because when I went left, I didn't get what I wanted. You know, and uh, it's it's funny because when you, it's funny that you brought up that part because this always stuck with me. In fact, I had to do the research on it. Someone told me uh, because I'm an entrepreneur, that's just what I do. I have a full-time job, so, uh, uh, but there's always been something inside me that says, hey, I want to do something for myself. And so when I started that radio station years ago um, and it went under, uh, Someone told me, in fact, you know that person, but I'm not going to put them on blast. They said, oh, Thomas, you, you like always fail. And I'm like, okay, all right. But then a couple of years later, someone says, out of the blue, I don't know what we were talking about, but this just stuck. They said, you know, Abraham Lincoln um, was one of our greatest presidents of all time, if not the arguably the greatest one. Did you know he started 16 businesses that went belly up? I'm like, I had no idea. And that was the, yeah. that was the extent of the whole conversation. And, but that always stuck, stuck with me. Like he still, he became, he's going to go down as one, the, if not the greatest president of all time. And right. we still talk about him. He's still revered to this day, Abraham Lincoln. Right. But if you go by what he did earlier, then he'd be a failure. He's, in my opinion, I don't know him personally, never met him, but that would go into the cleaner category. I have an op, I have a plan. If this option doesn't work, I have another one. Don't worry, I will get to my goal. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you have to take that word failure with a grain of salt. Let's just say, just because the business went, went under, what did you learn from that? Did you learn anything that you can use in your next one? Then that's not a fail, that's a win. It's a total win because, you know, um, and for those, my brother worked, he worked with me on that radio station tires, tirelessly. We both put in so much effort, so much energy into that radio station. But, and what's so funny about it now, uh, almost 20 years later, and look at what we're doing right now. I'm doing a, an interview with you right now uh, that's being broadcasted to the world. So uh, this just hit me right now. I'm still not quitting because I just bullheaded. This is not going to beat me. I will succeed at this, whatever yeah, my just, definition just, of success is for this. Yeah, you just pivoted a different direction. In fact, I mean, lots of people will say that um, 
the, the typical radio station that we knew, like from the 70s, 80s, 90s, even early 2000s, that's gone by the wayside. It's all internet now anyway. Yeah, and, um, and so, you know, that's why I really enjoy listening to this book. And I really do appreciate you showing me this book. And so now, I, 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 that's why I think it's important that we talk about this because I want other people to experience this. I want other people to become a, clean, to become a cleaner in um, what they wanna do. Again, you don't have to be a cleaner in business. You don't have to be a cleaner in sports. Uh, whether it's your family life or you want to be uh, I, I loved I loved his one of his analogies and it's so true I don't, it's not even an, an a analogy it's just truth when you talk about the janitor and the janitor cleans oh, yeah. up after everybody and he knows everything if you want to get something done that's the guy you call yeah and that is you know, and go ahead no, it's very true because, and, and I think when he was talking about the janitor, he, he, he was thinking about it from, you know, it doesn't matter what job you perform, you have an opportunity to be the best at it. Um, and, and, and even, um, I lost my train of thought for a second, but, um, oh yeah, uh, even with the janitor, like he could go on to eventually run the company and probably do it better than someone they hired off the street because he knows all the intricacies because he's worked his way up. He's put in the tireless time and effort and knows every you know detail as to how that business runs. And so when he makes it to the top, he is truly going to be unstoppable. Absolutely. Um... Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. We're 27, according to my uh, to my GoPro timer, we're 27 minutes into this. Um, I just have one last quote that I go really ahead. want to bring to you. Go ahead. Uh, the last quote from this was, you don't celebrate your achievements because you always want more. And I think, um, I used to be bothered by the fact that I was never satisfied, but now this makes sense to me. It's like, you don't get somewhere and then just coast. If you're a true cleaner, then you're always gonna to wanna to push yourself to the next level. You're not alive unless you're pushing yourself. I 100% agree with that. And then you see, and you have, I, I, I call these, all cleaners are elite, but then there's elite, elite cleaners. When you look at people like Steve Jobs, who, you know, yeah, you created the Apple computer, or you, you know, or and you created the like MacBook, but that wasn't enough for him. Let me create a phone. They didn't need to create a phone. Let's be honest. Uh, let me create yeah. a phone. And now everybody in Mama has either one or one or the other. They either got an iPhone or they got a Samsung. You know, that's the right. that's that's the most. But he created this. Uh, that wasn't enough. It, let me, it, let me, it's more a re reinvented the phone because exactly. I, yeah, because the phone that we have today is nothing like the phone that we grew up on. No, not at all. Um, there was a time when, whenever the cell phone first came out, which was a, it was a major achievement. Uh, people were like, ah, I don't know, it's too expensive, it's too big, it's too this. Uh, no, I, I'm not going to do this. Now, and so they kept their landlines. Now people are like, I, I don't have a landline phone. I just everything's on my cell phone. Yeah, right. And so, uh, and so now we literally got pocket computers because that's what they are. Let's be honest; they're pocket computers, sometimes faster than our desktops, in some cases. Um, Definitely faster than any computer at my very first computers. Oh, on, but it's just incredible. But you have these elite cleaners, and that's what they do. They keep reinventing themselves. They keep pushing themselves. They keep driving themselves, and um, it never never subsides it just keeps going which uh getting back to the book and him working with michael jordan it it's like um uh you know no wonder people still want a pair of jordans even he's been out of the league for oh my gosh what 20 20 years 
at least 20 years. Yeah. And people still, that's the hottest shoe. I want Jordans. And you're like, right. you ain't never seen this man play except on YouTube, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And But you still want a pair of Jordans. That's how relentless Michael Jordan is. That, um, okay, I can't play on my terms, but I'm going to reinvent myself. I'm going to be at the forefront of everybody's conversation still to this day. Right. Wow. Um, thank you for spending time with me on the phone. Thank you for spending time with us via the YouTube universe. I, I really enjoyed this. I'm actually liking this. This is the first time that I've done this. I've never seen anyone do this on YouTube. So I like to think that I'm the first. So I'm going to go out and actually start getting uh, more people to talk with me on my way home from work. So thank you. Thank you, Nick. You've been the first guest on this part of it. I'm going to break this up into little chunks and then I will upload the full version and then there's chunks for people who don't have a lot of time. Um, Nick, thank you so much. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Have a great day. All right, guys, remember to like, comment, subscribe, uh, uh, and we'll do this again sometime. All right. Take care. Bye. <laughs>